Hey everybody, Cory down here with a little short video I have here of uh, somebody posted on Steam forums that they made a list of uh, most useless or overpriced cards in the game. And I disagree with every single one of these choices. So I do want to not like insult the guy or play him and say, oh, he's just bad. But I do think there are some uh, misguided choices in here and I'm going to explain why in a second. So. Let's go ahead and get started with Shifting Scroll and Water Jet. Shifting Scroll, I think, is a great card because it allows you to uh, dig for good spells, especially the higher cost ones. It gets a little bit worse on higher difficulties, but usually on when you have five energy, I love digging for Flame Strike right here. It's five cost. It does a good a bit. And uh, let me try and get this thing out of there. Stop selecting that. Eh, there we go. There we go. I usually like going for this Flame Strike if I'm playing Reggie or, or Evelyn. Blizzard's really good. The interesting thing about Shifting Scroll is you can actually put the card or the spell you get into your hand straight to your discard and play a Cold Snap to get it discounted by three. So you can get a two cost Blizzard, which is really nice. Also works with uh, Twin Scroll, so you can give that to yourself again. That costs two or give it to somebody else like Mageness or Evelyn. And then another reason I really like Shifting Scroll is you can also dig out your control cards a lot faster, like Shock Nova and Flash Freeze. The one thing to note, though, is if you use Shifting Scroll and it's you don't have a spell in your hand, you're just going to send that spell you draw into the discard pile because you aren't drawing the spells. You are just revealing them, picking one, and then discarding a different spell or the same spell. So do keep that in mind. But that's why it works with the uh, Cold Snap so well, because you can just uh, reveal the Blizzard, Discard the blizzard and then cold snap the blizzard out. Next card we have here is Water Jet. I think this is a highly underrated card. I see streamers use it wrong or just take it out of Wilbur's deck right away, but I think it's an amazing card. Mostly because of this wet perk right here, where wet on enemies also increases the cold damage taken by one per charge. It makes this a very good one cost card that's uh, equivalent to just playing Zap, but it also adds more rain marks on the enemy. And in general, with this perk, it'll synergize really well with all these rain cards. So do keep in mind that you might not want to remove these from Wilbur's decks and you just have Wilbur or somebody on the team take this wet perk. Next card is Unstable Power. This one I do find a little bit on the weaker side, but it does have its uses, especially the uh, Corrupted version here. Because it's essentially a free 15% damage. And uh, dr because you're drawing one and uh, vanishing it. Um, most times I see people play the yellow version because it's a vanish. You get three powerful, which is really nice. And you're only suffering three spark, which is usually irrelevant in most cases. It plays really well with the uh, powerful perks, like maximum char powerful charges on this hero increase by two. And charges instead decrease by one at the end of turn. And powerful on this hero increases damage and healing done by 10% per charge and loses all charges at the end of turn. And as always, percent based attacks are always going to be good for big cards like uh, Flame Strikes attacks. So, yeah, keep that in mind for the bigger cards. Next, we're going to go over to Benediction. I think this is one of the best heals in the game and almost always worth picking up because it's uh, buffs your party members really, really fast. And it's very mana efficient for what it does. And if you're going for a DPS build on any of your characters and they take this plus on the CR increases damage by 1.5% per charge per perk and no longer increases healing received, they turn into uh, DPS machines a lot faster with Benediction. And it has the added effect of healing people, of course. Clarity! I brought the yellow version here because I think that's probably the worst one, but I think this is a pretty good card either way because of uh, you're not really losing a card by playing this. You're giving somebody else one of your draws, which I think is a good sacrifice. And the ability to dispel Insanity and Slow is actually pretty good, especially Slow early on and Insanity later on in the late game. The ability to dispel Sanctify also works really well against Dryads and Yilmer. And if for some reason you wanted to find a use for the uh, Yellow Clarity where you can purge anyone of Powerful, Fury, Bless, or... Dispel their Sanctify, 
There are some enemies in uh, Act 4 that do this Godly Strength card where they dispel their Sanctify and gain plus equal to that, so you might want to consider messing with that ability. And then Moon Catalyst from Yulmer. I should have brought a little picture of Yulmer here. You can uh, get rid of his Powerful before he does like Moon Beams and blast your face. Alright, next card is Baptism and Delude. This is interesting that they put these two cards right next to each other, because this is probably one of the most powerful combos in the game. Now with Baptism by itself, you can make it work with Healing Rains and Rains and Chumpy with his downpour ability. And you can transform it on all heroes to get a lot of bless on everybody, or just uh, power up one hero. You're going to be usually choosing the uh, power up one hero when you're running this uh, Dilute combo over here. So how does the Dilute combo work? Well, usually you're having a scout go first, and they're going to play this Poison Flask on one character. And then once your character is poisoned for, uh, let's just call it 20 poison, your healer is going to cast a loot, which changes that poison into 10 wet, or 11 wet if they took a wet perk. And then they can just change that 11 wet straight into 11 bless for uh, 3 mana. And 3 mana on your scout, which it really isn't a big deal. The uh, yellow flask is a vulnerable one. I believe the blue one is actually 28 poison. So if you got poison perks, that goes up to like 30 poison. So you'd be getting 15 bless from this combo. And that's a lot of bless for extra damage on your DPS. And then the blue one works just really well with Grookly or anybody with Fury because they get bleed at the end of the turn depending on how many Fury stacks they have. You turn that Fury into water and you turn that water into bless and they go hambos. Alright, next section is Scry and First Aid. Scry here, I think, is a great card. I know it's a bit memed on in the computer community to hate this card, but it is just, uh... It helps you find your combo pieces, like Praise the Sun, Unforgiving Nature, World in Flames, are all cards you want to get on your DPS as fast as possible, and usually with good cards. I included Expected Prophecy here because it works well with Praise the Sun, so you're actually just scrying down to your Praise the Sun and Expected Prophecy to uh, set yourself up. And then World of Flames is just so good. It just clears hallway fights on its own. Because you're getting three free Ember Storms and your next three Fire Spells are giving you Powerful. It's so good. Then I have on this page here, First Aid. First Aid is, yeah, it's kind of bad. But it does have its use. And that use is mostly in a random hero obelisk challenge where you are running without a healer. And you need a little bit of extra healing wherever you go, and some Dispel Bleeds. This would be good in Adventure if it was uh, less less rare, so it would be easier to craft. So you'd be actually able to uh, deal with Dispels on Bleeds like Yogger. Like, it, this would be amazing for the first Yogger fight in like one of your early playthroughs. But yeah. Move on to the next, next one, one, and final one. We have Repetition Training and Hidden Weapons. Repetition Training is great because it lets you pick up cards from your uh, discard pile and play some on your deck, but the upgrade is placed into your hand. And the cool thing about this one is it also discounts the card. So with Yellow Repetition Training and Bluff, you are getting a zero cost card that draws one and does damage, which is really broken. If you combine it with the zero cost Bluff with this zero cost Repetition Training, you have an infinite on your hands, as long as you're not playing with Exhaust. You, because you can just alternate between these two cards, discarding them. And then I also included Pummel in there, because that's a good card, always fun to play again. And for some reason, if you forgot to play your Skull Splitter, you can play it again. Or if you have a... Uh, if you're a real Chad, you'd be playing your Skull Splitter, and then Repetition Training out your Skull Splitter again. And winning the game because you're so awesome. And the last card we have is Hidden Weapon. I think this is a great card because you're just digging through your draw pile and putting a small weapon into your hand and also discounting it. If you don't have that many small weapons, you can really uh, abuse that to get Sharpening Knife every time, or you can abuse it to get your Poison Flask out every time. So it's not that bad. I think it's one of the better cards, especially if you uh, draft an Obelisk mode, a Hidden Weapons plus a Sharpening Knife, you are set. But yes. That'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Brush your teeth, take care of yourselves. You're all valid and awesome. Goodbye.